Hi, everyone, and welcome to Thursdays with Troy. I'm really excited to share this stuff with you today. For those who don't know me, I'm Troy Lambert. I'm the education lead at Plotter, and I'm a mystery and thriller author of over uh, 25 books, going on 30 books now. And today I'm going to look at kind of an interesting topic with you that we get lots of questions about and that I often mention when I'm doing demos that I use Plotter for, and that is looking for and fixing plot holes. So what I'm going to show you today is actually a plot that I'm currently working on. I've been working on this book, this particular book, for far too long. I've finished other books in the meantime, but this one has been kind of hanging out there. I'm finally finished with the book. I've written the end, and it's time to go back and revise things. Now, I know because it's a mystery and because it's taken me so long to write it, that there are going to be plot holes. There are going to be problems, story circles I left open, clues that I left unresolved, things that I didn't cover when I originally wrote this book. So I know this is going to happen. I know this is going to be a revision process, but I want this to happen as quickly as possible. This book's supposed to release this fall. So, you know, there's a lot of different things going on right? So what I've done is I've taken my book and I've pulled it apart. I've pulled what I've written apart and I've put it onto a plotter timeline, sans template without anything else. And then I'm just going to look at things. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to show you how actually at the end, I'm going to add a template because I'm not really done with this revision process yet. I'm just in the middle of it. So I'm going to show you like right in the middle of my process. And I'm going to show you what I do at the end to add a template and then line the things up with my template, make sure my pacing is correct and everything else that I'm doing with this book is correct before I even send it off to an editor at all. So with that, let's take a look at the plotter file that I have, and I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this. Okay, so my introduction here is you're going to see a timeline. Uh, this book is called Teaching Moments. I'm going to try not to give away too many spoilers, but there's essentially two major plot lines that are happening. My detective, Max Boucher, has been hired to go and find a horse that has been stolen, a horse that is missing, right? He's developed a reputation as kind of a pet detective. So this is one of the things that he does, and he does it all the time, right? As he goes and finds missing animals. The last book in this series titled Harvested was about him solving a disappearance of a bunch of horses in or a, a bunch of dogs in Seattle. And so it was a huge epic set in mystery set in Seattle where the answer turns out to be something completely unexpected that you never would su suspect to be the reason for somebody taking a bunch of dogs, especially a bunch of mutts, so, right? So we've set him up with this horse theft thing, but I've always had in mind that Max is much more than a pet detective, that he's going to solve much bigger crimes. So at the same time, one of the people that's involved with the horse theft is killed. It seems like those two things are related. Horse theft, he gets killed. The two are not related. Spoiler. There is, and running all through the book, is a first-person confession. Now, the reader doesn't know who is doing this confession until they get pretty far on in the book. But once they figure it out, they know not only who the killer is, but then the theft, the solution for the horse theft becomes apparent at the same time. Both mysteries get wrapped up in one final swoop. Now, these are small chapters, right? So normally I would have about 17 beats in a sluice journey. There are, let me show you here, there are 31 chapters in this particular book. And you can see that actually everything kind of lines up in chapter 30. Now, also, there's a lot of things in flux in this particular story right now still. The title chapters are not final. I haven't really written all of the things in here that I'm going to write as part of the revision process, but I have set some things up. So let me show you those things really quick before we go any further. So what I've set up is I've set up characters, even all the minor characters. I've set up clients, I've set up protagonists, the supporting characters, law enforcement, 
animals that are involved in this story, victims, the overall victim, Jeff Winger, who's our primary mystery that we're trying to solve as far as the murder mystery element. But there are tons of other victims that are also a part of this serial killer that Max is going to end up chasing and eventually catching. Okay, so I have all of these characters set up here. Now you'll notice something. Let me show you this real quick as well in the project tab. This was my original plotter file. This is now titled Teaching Moments Revised. This was my original plotter file of what I thought I was going to uh, put in here. And there's all kinds of different additions to this that are not in the newest version of this where I've just pulled my thing apart, right? So this was my original one that I wrote the book from. Now, when I go back to the project file, this is teaching moments revised. So this is what I've pulled in from what I've actually written to try to align that with what I planned to write, right? So there, this doesn't have all of those things in, but it also you'll notice the characters don't have a lot of pictures. They don't have a lot of description. They just say who the person is. That's because what I'm really using the characters as and what I'm also using the places as is I'm using them as tags. I'm using them to tag my scenes. You'll notice that the ones that are important are to have the book under here, Teaching Moments Revised. Okay, that's the book that I'm working on. That's the book that I'm related to. I also have set up a couple of tags. Now, these are for myself. Some of these are the editing stage. This needs revision it's, or it's been revised. Then the check stage means that I've either sent this to beta readers or, or critique partners. If I've sent it, have I received it back? And has whatever feedback I gotten from them been resolved. So that's just a check stage of tags that I've developed for myself to add this layer of organization to this revision process. Um, again, as we've talked about before, you can add any kind of tags that you would like to plotter, but this is the particular way that I'm using them. So I have tags that are going to tell me what I need to do. I have places. I have characters. And then when we go back to the timeline, the other thing that I have here is I've set these timelines apart this way exactly on purpose because these are the timelines that need to tie together. My sleuth, Max Boucher, his timeline needs to all work all by itself. If it were a story and a book all its own and we didn't have these other timelines, it still needs to work. In this particular case, especially, the first person confession needs to hang all together. So if I took that out of the book and wrote it as its own story, it needs to be a first person narrative that would actually fit. The clues are just another timeline that I've added to make sure that as I'm going through and revising this and I add more clues on this timeline, that I've hit all of the places where I should have put clues, that Max is finding out things in an order that makes sense, in a way that builds on each other, those type of things. So this is where I first move to my outline tab. And this is my most frequent use of the outline tab. And here's why. There's two things that I'm going to do, first of all. The first thing is I'm going to filter this by the plot line. So I'm going to check out only Max's plot line. And we've got all the chapters where he's involved. And I'm going to make sure as I go through here that all of this hangs together, that all of it is in order. Because the way plotter works, I can move things in here. So if I find out that this thoroughbred thing actually involved, actually moves that way, then I can sort it up above that other one. I can see that, hey, I've put things in the wrong order, okay? I need to put them in the right order, okay? So, and of course, I can move those back and forth. And if I don't want to manually sort that, I can click out of that. But I can change the order of everything right here and make sure that Max's uh, plot line all hangs together. 
Now, do I did I resolve all my story loops? Is everything in order? So normally, what I've done so far is I've just put a lot of the chapter titles and a lot of the titles that I assigned to each of the scenes. What I'll actually do as I revise this is I will go in and I will write notes here about this scene. And I will make sure that with my summary of the scene, that everything actually works. So I'll read through this just like a summary and make sure that this outline works all by itself if I didn't have anything else in the story. That way, if the reader only focuses on this timeline, they still get a great story. Now, probably the most important one that I'll filter by in this one, though, is the first person confession. And the way I started doing this was with my book, Stray Ally, I have a similar thing. There's a background story that's woven all through the book. And at the beginning of each chapter is a small segment of this overall story. And in the end of the book, both stories are resolved. The, the story of, that we've been following all along at the background of our hero and the story that's in the book itself both of those resolve at exactly the same time at the climax of the book. But I needed to make sure that this story hangs together if there was no other story. If there was no horse theft, if there was no other story, then does the serial killer story hang together? So I've got all these things in order. The very first person she kills is her brother. It's almost accidental. Then she has a, a killing of a friend of hers, his stepdad, kind of a rescue type thing. So there's all kinds of things that happen here. And I need to make sure that I didn't miss any clues that I didn't mess up anything in these parts of the story. And I also need to decide when the reader is going to be clued in as to who this might be. Because there are two primary people in the story that this first person confession could be coming from. And I know that as soon as I get down here to the very, towards the end of this, that once her father is killed in chapter 19 of 31, it's going to become fairly obvious to the reader that one of these, if they're an astute reader, that one of these potential suspects for this first person narrative is not the one. This is one of the keys. So I know that I'm going to put here that this needs to be a key moment and clearly resolved. Right? And so I'm going to put notes to myself all through these different scene cards when I see hey, this is where there's a key moment here that the reader needs to notice that I need to at least drop a strong clue in here so that an astute reader can figure out, oh, I think I know who this is. So by the time we come down to the final reveal, then we have, this, we have a solid idea about who this person is. And when they confess, that they actually killed Jeff, which was the killing at the beginning that we thought was related to the horse theft, everything falls into place. All the clues we put along the way fall into place. And this is where those two timelines intersect. So it's a very important point. So I filtered by plot line, but I can do this by any plot line that I've got. So I can look at the horse theft and make sure that I've left all the clues that I need to leave and that this plays an important role in every single chapter, okay? Same thing with clues is I can go through and filter by clues and make sure that those all hang together as well. But in this case, because there's two different sets of clues, I can also have these clues tagged by the horse theft clues. And I can say, okay, I can look at the horse theft, look at the clues on top of each other, and make sure that I'm dropping enough clues to the horse theft along the way that this all works out and starts to make sense. So I can use this filtering right here to look at this in a linear fashion, just like I would look in any other timeline. And if I find a plot hole, I can add something here to fix it or add a note to myself that, hey, this is something you broke that you left out. So you need to fix it. 
So I'm actually going to give you an example of that. When we go back to the timeline, I realized that when I did this particular um, part of the story, when Jeff was initially stealed, stole the horse, that there is a dead body involved and I never resolved that dead body. So I need to take care of that somewhere along the way. Okay. So in these clues, I need to make sure that I include that dead body somewhere. Okay. So I can put a note wherever I want to, you know, uh, in here uh, and just go back up and say, take care of dead body. And I can highlight that or put it in bold, something like that, so that I don't forget. Okay. So that's one of the ways that I do that. So I use my outline and I filter by the plot line. Now, the other thing that I will often do is I will look at how often a character appears or to make sure that a character appears in the right places. So there is a character in this story that is that appears a few places throughout the story. But since I decided about a different, a slightly different ending for that character to the story as I was writing, I'm going to filter by that character. I notice we can filter by any of these characters, minor or major characters that we've put throughout the book, right? But I've got this character, Zane, okay? And initially he played a very minor role. So I go through and I see he really only appears in one little scene here. However, he has some clues and I decided he needed to pay a, a more rate, major role towards the end. So now I'm gonna have to go back into some of these chapters and introduce him as part of the cast in those chapters. So I can quickly see that all those, I want Zane to be a major player, he isn't. So now I have to fix that. I have to go and weave that character back into the story. So I can filter by character right here on the timeline and make sure that everyone appears the way they're supposed to. I can also make sure I haven't made any mistakes. So if I come in here and filter, I know some of the victims of my serial killer, right? And so I know when they appear. So I'm like, okay, let me check on Peter and make sure I didn't have Peter appear in some scenes where he doesn't actually die. And then I go, oh, well, I actually see some scenes here where I should have tagged Peter and I did not. So I'm just going to go in and do that and make sure that he's actually in every one of these scenes. Like, did I miss something or did I actually not put him in those scenes? So I'm going to go back to my Scrivener file because at this point I'm going to have Scrivener and Plotter open at the same time. And I go back to my Scrivener file and I'm going to search and make sure that Peter's actually in those scenes where he needs to be. If he's not, I'm going to make a note that says, Peter wasn't here. Add him. So I'm going to resolve my plot hole because I'm going to make a note to myself. This is something I need to take care of that's part of this scene that I missed out on. So I can go through this and I can filter by almost anything. I can filter by a location and realize that this ranch plays a big role towards the beginning of the book, but at the end of the book, it doesn't play a role at all. And I'm like, you know what? Shoot, it actually should have played a role in this last section here. So I can say, okay, I need to add the Davies branch. I'm not even going to worry about anything about spelling or anything like that. I'm just going to put that in there and remind myself that I need to add that back in there. So I can scroll back and forth in my project and see what scenes are highlighted, what scenes are not, and I can use the places to establish that. I can do the same thing with characters, right? I can do, I can go through every single different character or every single different place and see that I know the hidden barn plays a major role here in the middle and towards the end of the story. So I'm going to make sure the scenes that are supposed to have it in there actually do. And it's actually tagged properly. So when I go through the revision process, then 
I can make sure everything is right. Now, as I go along, I'm also going to do a few different things. First of all, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to say tags that need revision. I'm like, pretty much everything needs revision. I've only revised a few things. I have a ton of things that need to be revised. Once I revise something, I'm going to click on it like this. I'm going to delete that tag. I'm going to add the tag that says revised. And I'm also going to change my scene card color. So I'm going to go, that one's green. That one's good to go. That one's been revised. And you notice as soon as I changed that, when I was looking for things that needed revision, as soon as I changed it from needed revision to revised, it faded out. So now I can just come to this and I can look at this and I can say, okay, I need to revise this pig scene, right? And I can go right back to my uh, Scrivener file and start revising that scene or any other one that I feel needs revision. Okay, so this is these are just ways to basically go through and filter your timeline, filter your outline, and spot your plot holes. The other thing that you can do is very simply just scroll through your project. By scrolling through here, I've seen the clues that I've added here at the bottom, and I've gone, maybe I'm missing a clue right here. So I need to go back and add that. So I can just add a scene card that gives me a flagged heads up that says, hey, you're missing a clue here. This chapter, you don't have a clue to either one of the mysteries. So why is this chapter here? And then I go back and reevaluate what this scene is supposed to be about. Remember, you can filter by anything. You can, And then you can look at this in a bigger, further out point of view and still filter everything. So you can filter by the Davies Ranch and I can still see everything even though I'm zoomed way out and I can still click into those scene cards and see what it is that I've missed and what it is that I've done. Now, the thing that you have can do that I haven't done in this particular case yet is you can add attributes. Now, I've added goal, motivation, conflict, and verb, which I'm going to put in every one of these scenes as I go through the revision process. But I could also add another attribute that talked about the action level. Oops. And then I can add that to my attributes of the scene. Now I can go through each scene. And as I look through these attributes, if I add something here, it says action level high. Let's say I meet, say medium, you know, and my goal here is to introduce acts. His motivation is to solve the case. And the bad guy is oops, guy is running right okay and our verb here is or the way we want our reader to feel by the end of this is let's say we want them to feel breathless we want them to feel like they just ran a marathon right well once i add those attributes i can also filter by those so I can come up here and I can look at the attributes that I've created and I can say, okay, now I can filter by those attributes. I can look at those different things and see how is this working? Like, how does this story work? Is there rising action here? What is the deal? And you can also do that with tags. You can add uh, a category of your own for, let's say I added action level as a category. And then I added, you know, high, medium, and slow. And then you can look really quickly at the pace of your story. The essential idea is to add whatever tags and whatever filters help you to spot those plot holes. So remember, the first thing I do is come to the outline. I just very simply filter by the plot line, whatever that plot line is. And I check and make sure that everything is right. Once I've checked all the plot lines here, I've added whatever notes I need to add. Then I come again to the timeline and I double check everything. I make sure by using filters 
that I have done, that I've included the right chapters in the right places by filtering by places, by tags, by all these different things. You see that now that I've colored one green, it's added a color over here. And so I can filter just by the ones that are green and say, okay, I've resolved those things, those type of things, okay? So it's just a trick. It's just a way to uh, spot your plot holes really, really fast and fix them. So if you see blanks on your timeline, whatever you need, you can just scroll back and forth between them and determine, is this something I need to fix or is this something that's just there? What this does for me is it speeds up my revision process greatly. I don't have to go through every single little thing and um, look at every one of them before I basically go through the process of usually I have it read aloud to me by the time that I, before I send it off, I have a computer read it aloud to me and I go through it at that point. That's usually my last step. But even before I go through that step, I can go through these different summaries and sections and make sure that all my plot holes have been filled and taken care of. Now, when it comes to fixing them, what I usually do is I go out into Scrivener and I fix them, and then I'll come back in here and I'll either do something like add a tag, add the tag that says re revised, and X that out, and then I'll put a note here about I'll put a note about the fix. And that tells me everything that I need to know. I've already put a note there that says these are the things that need to be fixed. Now I put a note there that tells me how I resolve them. Now, the very last thing I'm going to do when I get all the way done with this, and with this particular one, I'm not ready to do this yet, but I will come down here and hit use template. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the sluice journey. I'm going to use my revised version of the sluice journey that I've created. And I'm going to choose that, right? And I'm going to put it up against this. Now, I know that this isn't going to line up right away. I've got 33 chapters, and this is about 17 beats that are in the sluice journey. Okay, so I know that that's not going to work 100%. Now, what I'm going to do when I do that, once I'm ready to, is I'm going to go to the end and work my way backwards. So I'm going to say this. I know that this is going to be actually in chapter 31. That's where that's going to be. In this, I know that this is going to be approximately in chapter 29, something like that. And I'm going to move all those things from my template, and I'm going to make sure that I'm hitting the right beats there, and that I'm resolving all the things that I should be in those particular chapters. I'm going to line those up and I'm also going to make sure that they're not too long. I'm going to look at these percentages down on the bottom and say, well, if cot occurs around the 90 to 90, 95% mark, then maybe it actually belongs over here. And I'm going to make sure that that's actually the way it works. And I'm going to go, no, actually that's the final confession. This actually belongs about right here. And this is the 95 to 99% mark that's in this section here. So I'm going to play around with my template and be sure that everything lines up. Everything gets recognized the way it should be. Nothing's too long or nothing's too short. Like I say, I'm not really at that point with this particular story. But once I am, that's exactly what I'll do is I'll add my template back in that I took out initially. And I'm going to see if everything works the way it's supposed to, to work. If it works the way it's supposed to work, fantastic. I'm really happy about that. If it doesn't, now is my chance to fix it before anyone else actually gets a glimpse of it, besides maybe your writing partner, a couple critique partners, something like that. But you're not putting this out into the world as the mess that it actually is right now. Okay? So anyway, that's with that. This is the way that I go through and I spot plot holes. I use the outline. I use the timeline. I use filters, tags, characters, and places. Use those all as tags. And I make sure that everything in my story is working correctly before I even go to the final editing step that I go through and my final revision steps. I just do all this stuff first. And it keeps me from finding myself in trouble in ways that I don't want to find myself in trouble. Um, it keeps me from having the wrong things 
in my story in the wrong order. And with that, everyone, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you learned something. I hope that there's that this gives you a way to look at things differently when you're looking at your story. And with that, thanks everyone for joining me. And we'll see you next week on Thursdays with Dry.